welcome to the today's session on design of shaft part 1 myself professor kushari mechanical engineering department kk wag stop engineering education and research nasik in today's session we are going to discuss design of solid shafts and criteria used for the design of shaft learning objectives of the today's session discuss transmission shaft its categories and materials used for the shafts second objective explain the design of solid shafts on the basis of strength torsional rigidity and sme code use for the design of shaft let us see what do you mean by shafts it's a mechanical element or a machine element which is used to transmit power or a torque from one place to the other place how it is transport from one place to the other place by using other machine elements such as gears pulleys sprockets which are mounted on the shafts that means it gives support to the transmission elements like gears sprockets and pulleys generally shaft is having a circular cross section in some of the cases you will find shafts may have a square cross section also but in general circular in cross section shafts are given different names based on their specific application which are let us see different categories of the shaft first one axle now here axle means it's a stationary machine element which gives supports to the rotating member or a elements and because of that it's a stationary one that's why it's subjected to bending moment only you can take the example of bicycle wheel or railway railway wagon wheel where you'll find the axle one which rotating wheel which is mounted but in case of motorcycles you will find the axle also transmits the torque it's a rare example but in general axle is a stationary machine member it gives support to the rotating elements and subjected to bending moment only then second spindles spindle means short length rotating shaft generally you will find spindles in case of lathe and drilling machine spindles are the example of symbol it's a short length shafts then third type is counter shaft word counter comes because of the direction of rotation of the motion generally this counter shaft is a secondary shaft which is run by main shaft but motion or power which is transmitted from main shaft to this counter shaft through by using gears or gear box and the direction of rotation may be a counter that's why the name is given counter shaft then another one is the line shaft line shaft is connected in a line on the axial direction and one which different pulleys are mounted and through this pulleys uh, different machines are run it's like a group drive but nowadays no one is using the group drives are replaced by the individual drive and why this shaft is known as a transmission shaft because it transmits motion power and torque that's why name is given transmission shaft then another important point is material used for the shaft so you will find ordinary shafts are made of medium carbon steel 30c8 40c8 medium carbon steel means the percentage of carbon is in the range of 0.1 point 0.15 point to 0.0 per 40% is also known as a machinery steel another one is the high or greater strength shaft material that is high carbon steel 40c8 50c8 or also known as a plain carbon steel you can say then again when sometimes higher strength hardness and toughness which is required in some application that time alloy steel is also preferred that is 40 chromium 4 molybdenum 2 16 nickel 3 chromium 2 all these are the alloy steels alloy steel is also having another uh, advantage that is corrosion resisting properties that time sometimes even though the cost of alloy steel which is more than the high carbon steel or the medium carbon steel but alloy steel shafts are also preferred in some applications then commercial shafts are made of low carbon steel or mild steels also again how shafts are manufactured generally you will find shafts are manufactured by hot rolling and cold drying processes 
generally hot rolling and turn and ground to obtain the required super finish and size are preferred but here cold round steels when diameter is less than 75 mm are preferred and for larger one uh, hot rolled are preferred again here cold drawing process which is not preferred because of the residual stresses because to mount the different machine elements on the shafts the slots or keyways are to are to be provided on the shaft because of that the material which is removed from the shaft is distributes the stresses on the surface of the shaft that's why it is not prepared that's why hot roll turn ground shafts are prepared that's manufacturing method is prepared again for low production method machining which is adopted and for high production forming method may be hot or the cold which is prepared but depends on the requirement and size of the shafts commercial steel shafts are available in standard sizes that is in the range of 5 mm to 200 mm in diameters now again here the diameter range starts from here 5 mm up to 200 mm but again here in data book standard sizes of the diameter of the shafts are given 5 mm 6 mm 8 mm 10 mm 12 mm 14 mm 16 18 20 22 25 28 30 32 35 after 35 you have to increase the dimension by 5 mm 35 40 45 50 55 60 65 70 75 80 after 80 increase diameter by 10 mm 80 90 100 110 120 and after 120 up to 200 increase by 20 mm that means 120 140 160 180 and 200 mm this is about the shaft material and the standard sizes of the shafts and their manufacturing methods. Now important points is how to design the shaft that is very important. The design of solid shaft. There are two criteria. One is the shaft design based on the strength. Another one is the shaft design based on the rigidity. Again in rigidity there are two criteria. One is the torsional rigidity and second one is the lateral rigidity. Torsional rigidity depends on the twisting moment. Lateral this is in deflection due to the bending. But now let us discuss the design of shaft based on the strength and the rigidity. That is important. Look at the diagram here. You will find this is shaft. Now here shaft is having the different shape and uh, different steps here and diameters at the middle is having the large diameter at the end is small diameters again at the end bearings are mounted here and in between gears are mounted or the other pockets pulleys are mounted the it's a construction you will find here this is about the shafts the in the design of the shaft what we have to do we have to do we have to find out the diameter of the shaft which is we are going to mount the bearing but we have we can increase the dimension at the middle to accommodate the different parts for mounting purposes we have to take the care of that again here in second though in this diagram the deflection due to bending which is shown the such a you know, when the shaft length is more that time the lateral rigidity is the criteria for the design of the shafts so now let us see how to design the solid shaft based on the strength and based on the rigidity now let us see first one shaft design based on the strength now here while designing a shaft based on the strength that means we have to find out the different stresses induced in the shaft when induced stress is less than the material property or permissible stress you can say shaft design is safe otherwise shaft is going to fail that you have to check that means here it's a rational design based on that we are going to calculate the shaft diameter or diameter of the shaft there are different cases in design of shaft based on the strength now here first case is shaft subjected to torque only that means only twisting moment which is acting on the shaft second case shaft subjected to bending moment only only bending moment acting on the shaft third case shaft subjected to combination of twisting moment as well as the bending moment this is the important case the in general or practical application you will find shafts are subjected to combination of the twisting as well as the bending moment and sometimes shaft is also subjected to 
axial load id addition to combination of torque and bending moments these are the different cases that we have to see and how to design the shafts for different cases now let us consider the case number one that is shaft subjected to the torque now look at the shaft subjected to torque means twisting moment and because of this twisting moment what is going to happen the shear stress gets induced in the shaft the how to find out that shear stress or maximum shear stress develop in the shunt and actually in strength of machine element in torsion topic we have studied we know the basic equation that is tau by j tau by mt or mt by j is equal to tau by r or tau by r is equal to mt by j from this equation we can find out the tau is the maximum stress or principal shear stress or tau is equal to mt r by j mt is the twisting moment r is the distance shaft is the circular one and you have to locate the center and r is means the distance from the neutral axis to the most outer most fiber that is dy2 the substitute r is equal to dy2 j means polar moment of inertia of the shaft about the axis of rotation and its value is pi by 30 into d raised to 4 this is for a circular cross section therefore substituting the value of r and j here you will get tau is equal to 16 mt upon pi d cube mt means twisting moment d means diameter by using this expression we can find out the maximum stress induced but this tau again what we have to do we have to use the permissible shear stress here and find out the shaft diameter that is d cube is equal to the d is equal to this is the when shaft is subjected to the torque now let us discuss case number two when shaft is subjected to bending moment bending moment means because of the mounting of the part shaft is subjected to bending normally the bending moment that we have to consider when bending shaft is subjected to bending moment bending stress gets induced in it and in first uh, unit that is design of simple machine parts we have seen sigma we know that sigma b is equal to m b y by i as usual our basic equation sigma b is equal to m b y by i where m b is the bending moment acting on the shaft y y is the distance from neutral axis to the outermost power again this is dy2 and i is the moment of inertia of cross sectional area of the shaft about the axis of rotation but for circular shafts this value is pi by 64 into d raised to substitute i is equal to this value y is equal to dy2 and pi now sigma with you will get here sigma b is, is equal to 32 mb upon pi d cube that means this expression is applicable when shaft is subjected to bending moment and sigma b tau is equal to 16 mt upon pi d cube is applicable when subjected to twisting moment this is about when uh, torsional and the bending moments acts separately now let us see important case that is case number three when shaft is subjected to combination of loads maybe axial or com along with the torque and or twisting moment and bending moment so in this situation what we have to do when shaft is subjected to combined load that time principal stress and shear stress principal shear stress are obtained by more circle Again, already you study this more circle in strength of machine element. Even though I will would like to discuss these points within one or two minutes, I will elaborate how to construct more circle. Now, first of all, locate O, draw x axis that is normal stress sigma, then y axis tau. So, what we have to do first of all, O to E up to this. This is the sigma x. Sigma x means normal stress along x axis. After locating it A to B, we have to locate the tau. This is shear stress. Locate this shear stress or this point B and from O, locate shear stress towards this side that is OD. Once OD is constructed and AB is constructed. And how to construct O? O means sigma x that is normal stress. So what you have to do? Join B and D. After joining B and D, it intersects to this axis at point E. You will get the center. EB is the radial draw circle here. This is the red circle. It's a more circle. After constructing it, what we have to do? So we have to locate the sigma 1. That is the principal stress and maximum shear stress. Now here, sigma 1 means from this, you know, the y-axis. Now this is sigma 1 up to the point this. So this circle intersects 
year to this axis here at the point f the sigma 1 is nothing but from o f is the sigma 1 that we have to find out and how to find out o e plus e f but o e is nothing but here sigma x by 2 plus o f but a f distance is not given what we have to do we can make that e f you can rotate here the e f is also a radius of the circle and e b is also a radius of the circle therefore o e plus e b is equal to you can say sigma 1 but how to find out the a b now here e a it's a right angle triangle you can use find out the hypotenuse pythagoras theorem e b square is equal to a square plus a b square therefore e b square is equal to under root e a square or e b is equal to under root e a square plus a b square but what is e a that is sigma x by 2 and what is a b it's that have already located so what you will get the value of e b that means sigma 1 is equal to v plus e b you will get sigma 1 that is principal stress similarly here look at the more circle you will find e h is the maximum shear stress this vertical radius here it gives the maximum shear stress but how to calculate this how to find out this again here this e h and e b is the radius of the circle so you can find out the e b for a maximum shear stress again consider the triangle here e a b again e b is the hypotenuse that means e b square is equal to e a square plus a b square again e a means sigma x by 2 back a square plus e means tau square is equal to e b square so you will get the maximum stress here that is shear stress h is equal to e b by using this we can easily find out the stresses that is principal stress and principal shear stress by using the Mohr circle now here how to use this principal stress and principal shear stress here now here let us consider the two cases when shaft subjected to combination of load that is along with axial load torque and bending moment that time the value of this is sigma x that is important because we have to locate the oa how to locate the oa that is sigma x but how to find out this value the sigma x is equal to sigma t plus sigma b this is the magnitude of sigma x but how to carry in this case sigma t is because of this axial load that means when shock subjected to axial load and combination of torque and bending the, the sigma x is equal to sigma t plus sigma b if axial load is not acting that time sigma x becomes only sigma b but what is sigma t sigma t is the direct or you can say the axial tensile stress and we can calculate directly by using simple expression sigma t is equal to p upon pi by 4 into d square so this equation is applicable when shaft is subjected combination of axial as well as the torque and bending moment and sigma x is equal to sigma b that means we are not considering the sigma t that means axial load is not considered that time sigma x is equal to sigma b now let us consider the case of first case that is sigma x the sigma x is equal to sigma t plus sigma b you can substitute sigma t is equal to this and sigma b is equal to this you will get sigma x substitute this sigma x here and find out sigma 1 and find out tau max this is the approach to find out the value of principal stress and principal shear stress try to understand again here now let us find out the sigma 1 now this value sigma sigma 1 is o e plus e f but e f is equal to e b that is the radius therefore o e plus e b let us see in next slide here now consider the first case when sigma 1 sigma 1 means when axial load is acting axial load is acting sigma x is equal to sigma t plus sigma b that we have to consider so that time what you will get the o f is equal to sigma 1 and e h is equal to tau max so when we are going to consider this value you will find here look at this in this diagram sigma in general o e sigma 1 is equal to o e o e means sigma x by 2 plus e b e b means hypotenuse of this triangle that means plus this value under root sigma x by 2 bracket square plus tau square it's also under root then you will get the e b that's why you will get sigma 1 is equal to sigma x by 2 plus under root sigma x by 2 bracket square plus tau square 
but when we are going to find out the tau max maximum shear stress this tau max this h is equal to eb and again already we have calculated this hypotenuse from this triangle so you will get tau max is equal to under root sigma x by 2 bracket square plus tau square that means shafts when subjected to combined load it should be designed by using different theories of failure and there are two different theories of failure means consider now maximum shear stress theory so you will find this equation which is applicable to that now again therefore important thing while designing the shaft what care we have to take when subjected to combination of load that time it should be designed using different theories of failure now let us consider first theory maximum shear stress theory so according to maximum shear stress theory tau max is given under root sigma x by 2 bracket square plus tau square but what is the sigma x sigma x is equal to sigma b and already we know that how to calculate sigma b sigma b is equal to 32 mb by pi d cube in earlier equation we have seen when it is subjected to bending sigma b is equal to 32 mb upon pi d cube we can substitute this value of sigma b here and then this is sigma x you can substitute and what is the value of tau tau means 16 mt upon pi d cube when shaft subjected to twisting moment substituting the value of sigma b and tau in this case now here it becomes sigma x sigma b means directly sigma b you can substitute here tau you will get this expression tau max is equal to under root this expression and then take 16 upon pi d cube as a common which is outside 16 upon pi d cube common under root you will get mb square plus mt square this is the expression based on maximum shear stress theory we can use this expression to find out the shaft diameter that is d now in this case this value of tau max is is equal to ssy upon fos fos means factor of safety ssy means yield shear stress but yield stress shear stress is equal to 0.5 syt ssy means 0.5 syt upon fos so you can substitute tau max is equal to 0.5 syt upon fos then you will get the d that is diameter of the shaft again here maximum shear stress theory which is applicable to the ductile material try to understand it is applicable to ductile material again for ductile material another theory that is distortion energy theory which is the precise and accurate theory which is applicable to the ductile material only what is the change here in this case only ssy is equal to 0 0.577 seven seven syt that is the change you have to make in this expression according to distortion energy theory what change you have to make here point tau max is equal to 0 0.577 seven seven syt upon aps is equal to this expression you can use it when if someone asks you use distortion energy theory this distortion energy theory maximum shear stress theory which is applicable to ductile material let us see other theory other theory means maximum principal stress theory according to this theory sigma 1 principal stress which is calculated already we have seen by using more circle sigma 1 is equal to sigma x by 2 plus under root sigma x by 2 bracket square plus tau square now in this case when shaft is subjected to combined twisting and bending moment only there is no axial load that time sigma x is equal to sigma b so you can replace sigma x by sigma b but what is sigma b 32 mb by pi d cube and what is tau tau is equal to 16 mt upon pi d cube you can substitute these values here after substituting these values you will get and taking 16 upon pi d cube as a common sigma 1 is equal to 16 upon pi d cube under root mb plus under root mb square plus mt square bracket complete this is the expression which is for uh, to find out the diameter of the shaft based on the maximum principal stage theory but this equation is applicable to the brittle material when shafts are made up of brittle material you can use this equation to find out the shaft diameter but here the sigma 1 is equal to or permissible stress that is syt upon fos but it, syt upon fos this is about the two, two theories that is maximum principal stress theory and maximum shear stress theories are used based on the material that is brittle material or ductile material if it is not mentioned and always you will find the shafts are made up of uh, ductile material that's why if it is not mentioned always you have to use the maximum shear stress theory to find out the shaft dimension or shaft diameter now let us see the another important point that is equivalent torsional and bending moment 
Now here in earlier equation also we have derived here according to maximum shear stress theory tau max is equal to 16 pi d cube under root mb square plus mt square. Now in this case this under root mb square plus mt square this term is known as equivalent twisting moment. Equivalent twisting moment this term under root mb square plus mt square. So what this equation becomes tau max is equal to 16 upon pi d cube into te t is the equivalent so you will get here into t t is equal to under root mb square plus mt square now here this concept of equivalent torsional moment is used for the shaft on the basis of maximum shear theory of failure and what do you mean by this equivalent torsional moment uh, it's defined as when alone it acts it will gives uh, the shear stress when subjected to combine torsional and bending moment it's a equivalent torsional moment another one is the equivalent bending moment again according to here the this concept based on the maximum principal stress theory of failure according to this theory sigma 1 is equal to 16 upon pi d cube under root mb under root mb square plus mt square this term mb plus under root mb square plus mt square is equal to me or is known as equivalent bending moment you can substitute here so you will get sigma 1 is equal to 16 upon pi d cube into me again what do you mean by equivalent bending moment Again, it's defined as when it acts alone, it will produce the same results of bending stress when subjected to combine torsional and bending moment. This is equivalent bending moment. This is about the equivalent torsional and bending moment. Now, let us see another important point, SME code for shaft design. Again, here while designing the shafts, uh, Oh, you have to take the care while designing the shafts use ASME code of shaft design according ASME means American Society for Mechanical Engineers according to this code what we have to do we have to find out the maximum permissible shear stress this is tau max maximum stress how to find out this maximum permissible shear stress now here this tau max is calculated by considering 30% of SYT and 18% of SUT and whichever is minimum that we are going to use in the calculation. Now here let us see the first of all find out 30% of SYT that means tau max is equal to 0 0.30 SYT equation 1. Second tau max is equal to 18% means 0.18 SUT. After calculating these two values of tau max, base 1 is y 10 is UT, multiplying by 0 0.3018, and whichever is minimum that tau max which is that we have to use in our calculation to find out the shaft diameter. Again here sometimes to mount the parts on the shafts such uh, on the parts on the shaft such as gears, pockets, pulleys to prevent its relative motion or movement keys are used or keyways are provided on the shaft because of that keyways it removes the material from the shaft it weakens the shaft to take the care of that weakening of the shafts again when keyway is present on the shaft this above tau max whichever is minimum is further reduced by 25 percent that means whichever is minimum here tau max further multiplied by 0.75 because it is reduced by 25 means multiplied by 0.75 and this value of tau max we are going to use in our calculation to find out the shaft diameter again another important uh, things about according to SME code in this case we are designing the shafts for a static load condition but in day to day life in actual practice you will find shafts are subjected to shocks and you know the fluctuating load condition to take the care of that shocks and patik here SA, according to SME code two factors are introduced that is KB and KT KB means shock and patik factor for bending moment KT is the shock and patik factor for twisting moment now here this bending moment and torsional moments are multiplied by this KB and KT respectively now let us see now according to the maximum shear stress theory here tau max is equal to 16 pi d cube under root kb now here under root mb square plus mt square but this mb is multiplied by kb and mt is multiplied by kt see here the kb is the shock and putting factor for bending moment kt is the shock and putting factor for twisting moment similarly according to the principle a uh, maximum principle stress theory 
sigma 1 is equal to 16 upon pi d cube in bracket again here mb plus under root mb square plus mt square but according to acme code these terms should be multiplied by kb and kt that's why kb mb plus under root kb mb square plus kt mb it's multiplied here it takes shock and particle factor means it takes the care of the shocks which into says during the operation and particle means it takes the care of fluctuating load conditions and the value of this kb and kt depends on here based on the application whether load gradually applied when kb is that time kb is equal to 1.5 kt is equal to 1 when load suddenly applied or minor shock it is kb in the range of 1.5 to 2 kt 1 in, in the range of 1 to 1 1.5 when load suddenly applied heavy shock that time kb in the range of 2 to 3 and kt is in the range of 1.5 to 30 that means when we are going to use a semi code first of all what we have to do we have to take the we have to select the material for the shaft after selecting it take the value of syt SUT from the data book once you will get this value then multiplied by 0 0.302 to syt and 0 0.18 to SUT, whichever is minimum that is the our maximum permissible shear stress if kv effect is there that time reduce again it by 25 percent and that tau max that we are going to use here to find out the value of uh, sharp diameter to find out the sharp diameter by using maximum shear stress theory or principal normal stress theory second criteria design of shaft based on torsional rigidity so what is happening when shaft is subjected to, to torsion means twisting because of that during this twisting rigidity means shaft should be uh, is said to be rigid if does not twist much due to torque torque means it's a twisting because the to transmit the motion or a power shaft is rotating and there may be possibility of twisting of the shaft but it should be minimum one or it, it should be rigid to avoid that twist that's why sometimes we have to check it this twisting of the shaft or for that purpose here angle theta which is shown that is the angle of twist look at this here because of twisting here this theta this is the permissible angle of or angle of twist sometimes the while designing based on the torsional rigidity what we have to do we have to find out theta or angle of twist and if it is within the permissible limit so we can say our design is safe otherwise it is not going to work we have to change the material then second case how to find out this angle of twist now here for that purpose angle of twist we know that mt by j is equal to g theta by l this is the standard equation mt by j is equal to g theta by l therefore theta is equal to mt l by j into g theta is in radian to convert in radian into degree it's multiplied by 180 upon pi therefore theta is equal to 180 upon pi into mtl by j into g where j is the polar moment of inertia and e for circular shafts is pi into d raised to power upon 32 we can substitute this value here and what is g g is the modulus of rigidity and theta is the angle of twist in degree and substituting the value of j pi by 32 into d raised to power here then to convert radiator into degree multiplying by 185 so you will get theta in degree 584 into mt into l upon g into d raised to 4 here by using this expression we can find out angle of twist if this angle of twist within the limit we can say our design is safe so what is the limit now here permissible angle of twist or this theta or this theta for machine tool application is 0.25 per meter length and for line shaft it's 3 degree per meter length is the limiting value and g is modulus of rigidity for steel generally its value is 79300 newton per mm square if you don't know you can take 80000 newton per mm square that is modulus of rigidity that means by using this expression we can find out the angle of twist per meter length if it's within the limit we can say our design is so this is one criteria based on torsional rigidity another one is the lateral rigidity so no need to go in detail here different methods are uh, given to find out the deflection of the shaft if length of the shaft is more and because of mounting of different part there may be possibility of deflection 
if it's a horizontal axis and if it gets deflected you will find deflection because of this here del 1 or y1 y2 y3 deflection so you already studied in saying top machine element that is deflection of beams different methods are given area moment method is also the mkastigoronas theorems is also there by using different these approaches we can easily find out the lateral deflection of the shaft but uh, in general that it this lateral or a deflection of the shaft uh, shaft should be so rigid to have a minimum lateral deflection and for many moment of the shaft which is given by this expression m is equal to i into d square y by dx square y is the deflection here uh, at the uh, any position of the x i is the flexural rigidity and m is the bending moment so you can use different approaches to find out the lateral rigidity but here in this topic we are going to see the design of the shaft based on the strength and design of the shaft based on the twisting or torsional rigidity this is about the design of solid shaft now let us have some recap or some questions what we have discussed during this session what type of stresses induce in the shaft the what are the different types of stresses are induced in the shaft the first one is the tensile stress due to axial load second one is the torsional stress or this torsional stress means shear stress and third one is the bending stress what is the permissible angle of tissue for the line shaft the permissible angle for the line shaft is 3 degree per meter length again what is the permissible angle for the spindle it's a 0.25 degree per meter length what is permissible shear stress for design of the shaft as per the SME code according to SME code the tau max should be multiplied by year 30 and 18 now tau max is equal to 0 0.30 SYT and tau max is equal to 0 0.18 SUT whichever is minimum that is the tau permissible shear stress and if KVA uh, effect is considered again this value is reduced by 25 percent that means 0 0.30 SYT 0 0.18 SUT further multi whichever is minimum further multiplied by 0 0.75 that is the permissible shear stress that we are going to use in the design of shaft for the design of shaft which theories of pillar are applicable for the shafts and why now here i have explained two theories one is the maximum shear stress theory which is applicable for the shaft why it's applicable because shafts are made up of ductile material the maximum shear stress theory gives good result based on the explain experience for the shafts and principle maximum principle normal stress theory which is applicable to brittle material but here you might have studied the different theories of failure you will find distortion energy theory is more suitable and more precise for ductile material that's why while designing the shaft you can prefer maximum shear stress theory or distortion energy theory if you have any query you can contact me at 989042679 or mail me at pvkushare at the rate kkwag.edu.in. I have referred Vivi Bandari's book Design of Machine Element 3rd Edition Magro Public.